today we are predicting with 100% money back guaranteed accuracy. This year's Josh Jacobs, this year's Damian Pierce, this year's Jamal Williams, this year's Jared Goff, this year's Seattle offense, this year's Philly offense, this year's Russell Wilson, and this year's Zay Jones. 55 burgers, 55 chicken fries, chicken bumpers. Tuck your shirts in. Flex them. Let's eat. Let's start off with Jamal Williams, who led the NFL in rushing touchdowns, who led the NFL in red zone carries, 10 zone carries, goal line carries, all the above. Just right place, right time, right role. Now, the low-hanging fruit that I've kind of been chirping about all offseason is that David Montgomery, who is here to replace Jamal Williams, is this year's Jamal Williams. But I'm going to go another direction that I haven't really heard the comp for. And I think this year's Jamal Williams is going to be Alexander Madison. The teams are very similar. The offensive scoring prowess is very similar. The way the running backs are built and their style of play is very similar. You look back to last year, Minnesota, third most red zone opportunities per game, 3.8. Number three in the NFL. You know who number two was? Detroit, right above them at number two, right above them. Both teams were the definition of a pass funnel defense. You remember how many points Detroit let up last year? Every single time their defense was on the field, the other team was chucking up six. They couldn't stop a fucking thing through the air, which made them need to score a lot. Led to a lot of goal line opportunities for Jamal Williams. Now, on the flip side, Minnesota's run defense, very, very good. Pass defense, no, 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 no. Going to be a very similar setup to what Detroit was last year. Last year, Jamal Williams' target share, 2.9%. Last year, Alexander Madison's target share, 2.9%. Obviously, Dalvin Cook is now out of the way. But as pure runners, they are strikingly similar. Over the last four years, just average yards per touch number. Madison, 4.6. Jamal Williams, 4.6. Yards per route run. Jamal Williams over the last four years, 1.36. Alexander Madison, 1.24. Now, no doubt about it, Alexander Madison has some blow-up fantasy games when given the opportunity. But I think, holistically, when you look at these players just on a raw pound-for-pound, click-for-click basis, they're not too dissimilar of players. Like all, They're both like good, above-average, probably, on all three downs. Like Jamal Williams was wildly unincluded, excluded is the right word I'm looking for in the passing game last year. But if you remember his days back in Green Bay, he was actually like kind of good. He used to actually take work and siphon work from Aaron Jones on third downs. I don't know if y'all remember that, but we had been like dying for Aaron Jones to be the guy in the Green Bay offense because Jamal Williams kept playing on passing downs. What I will say though is I think Purely Alexander Madison's a better runner. When I look back at the last four year numbers, right, like they were similar in terms of their production on like a per touch basis, but Madison had a much higher breakaway run rate as well as a better elusiveness rating. So I think he's a little bit more creative. I think he makes a little bit more with a little bit less opportunity than Jamal Williams does, but we haven't seen him put it together for a full season. However, this is the first season where he's going to be the guy in that backfield. I wouldn't be surprised if someone comes in and like takes the pass catching work from Madison at some point this year, sort of like DeAndre Swift did to Jamal Williams last year. But I think this Minnesota offense is going to be one that gets to the goal line super fucking often. Kirk Cousins threw the ball a ton last year. They got Jefferson, they got Hawkinson, they got Addison. They got a really good offense, and I think it's going to lead to a lot of goal line opportunities for Alexander Madison. So I don't know if he's going to be any good running the ball. I don't know if he's going to catch more than 40 passes this year, but I bet he gets a ton of goal line opportunities. So this year's Jamal Williams is going to be Alexander Madison. This year's Damian Pierce is Kendra Miller. Post the NFL draft last year, Damian Pierce was my running back three in Dynasty Rookie Drafts, despite being the RB7 in the actual draft class, okay? And this year, Kendra is the RB3 for me in Dynasty Rookie Rankings behind Bijan and Gibbs. It was similar to what we had last year. Kendra fits the same mold as Damian Pierce, and in my eyes, they are very, very similar players. Kendra is a little bit more explosive, a little bit less involved in the passing game. Both are three-down skill set backs with 215-pound weights attached to their biography. When I look at both of them coming out of college, like we already saw what Damian Pierce was last year. He had a small sample size coming out of Florida, and then he was able to extend that into the NFL and show us that he was good enough to be like the workhorse at the NFL level. Coming out of college, he had the single highest PFF run grade. He had a missed tackles force rate of 39%, which was number three in the NCAA, 3.65 yards after contact per attempt, which was 79th percentile. And in 2021, Kendra was actually number one in the NCAA on that list. But then last year when he became the guy at TCU and handled a full, full workload, he averaged the exact same amount, 3.65 yards after contact per attempt. Damian Pierce, his 10-yard run rate, so the percentage of runs that he had at Florida that went for 10 yards or more, 
20%, eighth in the NCAA. His 15-yard run rate was 9%. His touchdown rate was 10.9%. 10.9% of his touches went for touchdowns during his final year at Florida. That was number one in the NCAA. Number five overall in elusive rating. His route running grade was fourth in the NCAA behind only Jameer Gibbs, Rashad White, and Jerion Ely right in front of James Cook. 1.8 yards per route run, number 10 in the NCAA. Now we look at Kendra coming out of college. 31.3% missed tackles force rate, 85th percentile. Not top three like Damian Pierce was, but still really good. 15 plus yard run rate, 9.4% higher than Damian Pierce. 10 plus yard run rate, 17%, a little bit lower than Pierce, but still 81st percentile. Elusive rating, 86th percentile. 7.1% touchdown rate, number 10 in the NCAA. So there's similar players in that they have great breakaway run rates. They're both extremely elusive. They're both 215 pound plus backs, and they both score touchdowns at a very high rate. Now, admittedly, going into the season, Kendra is going to have a much higher uphill battle because he's battling both Alvin Kamara and Jamal Williams out there in New Orleans. Pierce went into camp with every opportunity to become the guy. So Kendra, I don't think he'll start off as hot as Pierce did right away, but I do think Kendra could be a big-time playmaker down the stretch and be a dude who, over the last six to eight weeks of the season, we absolutely get infatuated with. He wins leagues, and then the following year, we're drafting him as like a fifth, sixth-round fantasy pick, similar to Damian Pierce. I just They remind me a lot of each other where you watch them play, and there's nothing that, like, overly sticks out to you, right? They're not Bijan. They're not guys who like make guys miss at a crazy fucking, you know, that crazy highlight plays or anything like that. They obviously have highlight plays, but they're more just like good everywhere. They're well-rounded. They're really smooth. They're really hard to bring back, bring down in the backfield. They're just really good athletes that excel at every part of the game. Kendra Miller and Damian Pierce just remind me of each other to a very high degree. So we got Jamal Williams, Alexander Madison. We've got Damian Pierce, Kendra Miller. If you're enjoying the video so far, I can make another one of this, but I need y'all to hit the thumbs up button to let me know that you are enjoying it. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. And if you're new, new here, you probably have not yet signed up for Underdog. And if you sign up for Underdog with our code, you're getting our draft guide absolutely free, which has our positional rankings. It's got our overall rankings for one quarterback for super flex leagues. It's got our must draft players for this year. It's got the all fade team dudes that we want absolutely not a fucking lick to do with. It's got our number one draft strategy, depending on where you're picking in your draft, one through six or seven through 12, super flex, one quarterback. It's got our favorite late round targets, anyone being picked after. 100 in drafts dudes that we are targeting everything you need for your draft you will get sent out to you via email for free if you go to deposit on underdog right now we are doing drafts on underdog all the time we're going to be doing a ton of pickums throughout the season on underdog so do yourself a favor go to underdogfantasy.com use a link down below if you want whatever's easiest for you download the app and when you deposit ten dollars or more they're going to double whatever you throw down so if you throw down ten you'll have 20 on your account. If you throw down 40, you'll have 80 on your account. They're doubling it. Plus you're getting our draft guide, all of the updates throughout the summer as well. Once training camp and preseason hits, obviously our rankings are going to be flip flopping out there like a fucking scuba diver. Those will be coming straight to you into your email. If you sign up with underdog, if you are in a state that's not eligible for underdog right now, you could just go to bdge.shop in order to cop the draft guide for a little bit more money. So the cheapest plus best value for you to get that is on Underdog Fantasy. Now, the cheapest and best value to get Josh Jacobs from last year is by drafting Cam Akers in the sixth round. This was where Josh Jacobs was going last year. When you look at the offenses, right, like going into last year, the Raiders were not a good offense. They were not a good offensive line. We weren't really sure what Josh, Jac Josh Jacobs' role was going to be. We were, we were pretty confident he was going to be a two-down back, but there was a lot of murkiness going on. Uh, throughout the summer, right? He was like playing in their first preseason game. They brought in a lot of pass catchers onto the roster. We didn't know if his role was going to be expanded on third downs, but it turns out they basically just had one target in their offense, Devontae Adams, who takes all the targets. You look at the Rams offense going into the year. Not a good offensive line. Kind of a shitty offense overall outside of just Stafford and Cooper Cup. And there's no competition for Cam Akers behind him. It's Kyron Williams. It's Zach Evans. It's Ronnie Rivers. No one picked before the sixth round. Or maybe Kyron was a fifth round pick, but it don't fucking matter. It's all Cam Akers in that backfield. Akers and Jacobs both proved in college that they were really, really efficient, good pass catching running backs. Josh Jacobs got to prove it last year. Cam Akers will get to prove it this year. They're both dudes built like three down backs. They're both over 215 pounds. They both can stay on the field for all three downs. Cam Akers feels like the easiest sixth, seventh round workhorse pick that you can get 
super late in drafts. Akers, I think, is going to get as many touches as this man can handle. He was dynamite down the stretch last year, averaging over 110 yards from scrimmage per game over the last month of the season. I think that rolls straight into the season. And now that he is even more time removed from the Achilles tear, I expect him to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more explosive, and a little bit better conditioning. So really, really like Cam Akers this year. This year's Russell Wilson. Let's talk some bad. Let's talk some bad. We've talked We've talked good, right? We like having this year's Jamal Williams. We like having this year's Josh Jacobs. We like having this year's Damian Pierce. We do not want this year's Russell Wilson. And this year's Russell Wilson, we talk about an old, wily veteran quarterback swapping teams in the offseason. Everyone's getting excited. Everyone thinks this new team is now a contender because they were one quarterback away. Their offensive line is really good. Their defense is elite, just stifling. Uh, of course, they're going to be great because this was the only piece that they needed to be great. Sounds a lot like Russell Wilson last year, but it sounds exactly like Aaron Rodgers this year. I'm nervous about the O-line. I'm nervous about the O-line in the fact that last year, Green Bay was the number three ranked pass blocking line per PFF. Now, if you add a zero to that, 30, that's what the New York Jets offensive line ranked, 30th in pass blocking. Now, they dealt with a lot of injuries and if they can stay healthy, they will be a much better offensive line. They have a lot of upside, but they have a wide range of outcomes for that O-line. On paper, they're a good O-line, but they're never healthy. They have guys doing good, then doing terrible. Like They are a very sporadic group. If you want to project only upside, only great things to happen, sure, that's the team for you, but it's been year in and year out with this. And his weapons just like, obviously, I love Garrett Wilson. He's, he's a phenomenal player, but behind Garrett Wilson, they're just throwing shit against the wall and hoping it sticks. They bring in Alan Lazard. They have Corey Davis. They have Nicole Hardman. They have just like a bunch of mid receivers. Now, it is an upgrade from what the Packers had last year after losing Devontae Adams, but like I am, Rodgers has always been behind a really good offensive line. That's one thing that they've done really well in Green Bay is just keep that man protected year in and year out. I don't know if we're going to see that in New York, man. And there's like too much optimism here that I feel like we're in for a letdown. I get that they were, what, seven and nine last year. The schedule was a little bit iffy. I think it's going to be a little bit tougher this year. Uh, Miami's fucking no no joke there. Buffalo's obviously a good team, so I'm 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 hesitantly out on Rodgers. He's like in that tier of Jared Goff, Geno Smith, where they're getting drafted like QB seventeen, but he's definitely the back end. He's not someone I want as my starting quarterback this year. On the flip side, I'm getting a little bit higher on this year's Jared Goff, and I know I compared the Detroit offense to the Minnesota offense, but Kirk Cousins is already like better than Jared Goff as a fantasy QB. I'm talking about Derek Carr. I, I think like Jared Goff kind of got written off after he moved from LA to Detroit, had a pretty subpar season. We're talking about like an old veteran QB in a new situation that no one really wants a part of because we don't really know how the offense is going to shake out. Derek Carr moving over to the Saints. I mean, last year was, he had Devontae Adams, but the O-line was bad. Darren Waller couldn't stay healthy. Like he had nothing behind Devontae Adams. Moves over to New Orleans. They have a, a cool little mishmash of weapons, in my opinion, right? They got Olave. Now you get Michael Thomas, who's probably old and probably cooked, but he's he's your two. You got cool deep threats in like Rashid Shaheed. Derek Carr likes to throw the ball deep, and he's been a pretty accurate deep ball thrower over the years. They've got Jimmy Graham coming bike. You shitting me? No, they have Jawan Johnson. They have Taysom Hill, sure. They have Foster Moreau who's coming over from uh, Vegas. They got Kamara catching the ball out of the backfield. They've got like a decent offensive line. They're not the team like in the trenches that they've been over the past bunch of years. But I feel like the last like decade or so since Breeze has been there or Breeze was there, both sides of the ball, trenches were absolutely fucking, you know what I mean? I don't think he necessarily has that now. But I do think Derek Carr will be like a, a pretty decent, a pretty decent QB this year that gets elevated by the situation around him rather than getting pulled down like what it was last year. So I think Derek Carr is this year's Jared Goff. Last year going into the season, the Seattle team got no love. We hated their offensive line. We hated their quarterback situation. We were pissed that Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf were going to get dragged into the gutter. And I was like, settle down, settle down. I didn't say that shit. I was uh, completely on board with that take. That didn't happen. They were awesome last year. They were way more exciting than we'd imagine because Geno Smith made things happen there. Kenneth Walker was outstanding. The team that I think, and this kind of feels like low-hanging fruit at this point. This is not necessarily a new thought. I've talked about this in videos before. But the team that I think could be most like Seattle this year is Tampa Bay. Baker could be this year's Geno, right? Like, I get it. No one likes Baker, but don't act like you liked Geno Smith last year going in. Baker's shown that he could be a good NFL quarterback before, okay? So given the chance with the weapons, like, of course, when you have shit weapons, you're not going to be a good quarterback. You know, that that stands to be the, the right way to think about things for 95% of QBs. Mahomes is going to be good wherever he goes, right? But 
95% of the middle spectrum of quarterbacks need weapons to elevate them. Baker's going to a place with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. They are kind of like Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, right? Where everyone's like, damn, I don't really want to draft them because because their QB is going to bring them down. Their offensive situation is going to bring them down. They're not going to have a lot of scoring opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm definitely not comparing Rashad White to Kenneth Walker. But I I, I, I more so mean from like the passing game. I think their offensive line is underrated. Seattle went into the year with a completely unknown offensive line, but they had two rookies that played really well for them. And by the end of the year were, that was a strength, not a negative for them. That was not a liability for them. Where Tampa, they were banged up last year, so they'll have their line at full strength, hopefully. And they'll be, at worst, probably like an average offensive line, but probably above average offensive line. Neither team had any, like, good tight ends or pass-catching tight ends of consequence. So one of, like, the underrated stacks that remind me a lot of Seattle last year is Baker, Evans, and Godwin. I've been drafting a lot of Evans and Godwin at discount. I, I, I grab Baker as my QB3 in best ball drafts on underdog in, like, the late rounds. And super flex leagues, he'll go in, like, the ninth, 10th round. So I like him there as a starting quarterback. Some of y'all believe in Kyle Trask. I mean, I mean... I'm just saying. So I like Tampa Bay to be this year's Seattle. It's a completely unknown division with, you know, teams filled with quarterbacks. We have no idea what's really going to happen there. I see a lot of similarities. Now, we want to talk about which team is going to be this year's Seattle. How about which team is going to be this year's Philly? I had three teams on this list. And and the hardest part about making this comp is that Philly's offensive line is so fucking elite that they just bring up every aspect of – their offense, and it's really hard to find a comparable offense or situation. So I kind of narrowed it down to three teams and then further narrowed it down to like the one team I think is probably the team that most resembles Philly for me. The first team I thought of was Miami. Tua Hurts, two fantastic offensive weapons, two really good on defense. Both sides of the ball just have a lot, a lot locked up. But I don't know if Miami really has a lot going for them on the offensive line and also like really in the backfield right now. So I don't think they're really lined up outside of quarterback, wide receiver one, wide receiver two. We had the Chargers, who I thought about as well. And the Chargers offensive line is actually sneaky, really fucking good. So I think the Chargers probably make more sense than than the Dolphins because the Chargers have a really good quarterback. The Chargers have a group of really good wide receivers. Chargers have good running backs and a good offensive line with a new coaching staff. But the team I settled on this year that I feel like we're getting at good value that I feel like doesn't have many holes on offense outside of their offensive line, but the rest of the situation is kind of nice, are the Jacksonville Jaguars. You have a young electric quarterback entering their year three season. You have a head coach entering the second season, which is usually like the season the offense blasts off. Year one is kind of like integrating the offense, getting everyone accustomed to it. And if it starts to go in the right direction, you usually see year two take off. We saw that with Philly under Nick Sirianni. You have two fantastic wide receivers, right? You have Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown, and then you have Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk. Now, I'd give the edge there to Philly, obviously. You have two really good pass-catching tight ends in Dallas Goddard and Evan Ingram. You have young, explosive running backs who were probably billed as better pass catchers than they actually are. You had Miles Sanders last year. You got Travis Etienne this year. I, I, I don't think they're too dissimilar, to be honest with you. I think Etienne's probably a little bit more explosive. Maybe Sanders runs a little more, like, bigger, you know? Not not afraid to drop that trap and, and throw it into the neck bone of somebody. But I see a lot of similarities. The biggest question mark, of course, is the Jags offensive line. That could crumble around Trevor Lawrence and be the difference of why they don't excel to where they should be or where they will be in year year two, year three, whatever. But if if the Jaguars offensive line can pull it together and be like a top sixteen line for him, this team is you're getting a ton of fucking value in drafts. I know Calvin really is going really high in best ball drafts on underdog, but in normal leagues, I don't think he's going to be going that high. I think you'll be able to grab dudes like Ridley in the fifth round, Christian Kirk in the sixth, seventh round, Evan Ingram as, as the tight end, like nine, 10, which you can grab now. Trevor Lawrence is not yet in that like elite tier of fantasy quarterbacks. And he doesn't really deserve to be, but I do think after this year, we will be looking at him that way. So I see a lot of similarities outside of the offensive line that when we are looking back, all these dudes, we're going to want to draft really, really highly, coming into next year. And then on that same final note, the comparison that nobody cares about or asks for, this year's Zay Jones is Zay Jones. Zoltan. Tony not going to have a fucking lick of clue what that was even from. So those are the comps I got for y'all today. Was this video interesting? I could do more of these. I don't really know what to do at this part of the season in the summer because I could just do videos that everyone 
you know, we'll click and, and watch and shit. And that's probably good for business and good for the channel. But I like to get a little bit more creative with it. And everyone does the same shit on fantasy YouTube. So I'm like, let's go the other way. When they zig, we zag. All right. So if you like this, show some love in the comments, please. And while you're down there, hit this button. Subscribe if you're new. And most of all, if you want to support the brand, go cop the draft guide, please. Underdogfantasy.com. Or the link to the app will be down below. First thing down there. If you go deposit $10 or more using code BDGE, they're going to double whatever you put down so you can come draft with us. We are dropping draft links in the Discord all the time for you guys to draft against us, all the BDG team members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Draft guide free email to you. Updates throughout the season or the summer, I mean. Plus, you'll have a lot of money in your account to draft and gamble with when the season starts. All right. I love y'all. I'll see you uh, tomorrow.